I like the reds, talking reds, Tuesdays, talking reds. Is it Tuesday? Is it Tuesday? Yeah, yeah it, it is, is Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm having to check what my days are. That's how bad it is. Uh, the World Cup, no Liverpool. My head's chocker. I blame the World Cup. You know, like the World fact Cup's that there's mad. football every day makes yeah. it feel as if it's kind of Saturday every day, but you've been asked to come in to work a bit, doesn't it? Mm. Um, I like it though. So do I, yeah. It's, it's great three, just three, having... four games a day is fucking brilliant. It's just great having like football you don't care about and you're not invested. And I think um, last night I got home, um, I was away yesterday, got back from Leeds, sat down, watched uh, the second half of the England match with like a glass of Coke and I was just thinking, World Cup's brilliant. Like just watching Jordan Henderson and everything play, play the way he did, but not actually care about how the result uh, pans out, just that Jordan Henderson plays well. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it as well. Not not because I was jumping off me couch and chair in England just for a bit of footy to watch. Um, not particularly bothered how they do. Uh, we've we've talked about this before and about the reasons why. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for Jordan Anderson as well because I kind of you know I'm invested in Jordan Anderson. He plays for Liverpool, so does Trent. He didn't get on unfortunately. Um, and then I'm I'm quite surprised again, or maybe I shouldn't be by now, uh, about some of the reaction to Jordan Henderson's performance. He plays well. The pundits across the board have said that he plays well. The manager seems happy with him, everything else. And I've gone to myself, oh yeah, he's played well there. He's hit some great balls, had a decent shot, closing people down right at the end. Put some loads, brilliant tackles. Loads yeah. of energy into his performance. You know, a good midfield performance for England. And yet there's still people, he's shite, he's crap, I can't be arsed, he's crab. not good enough. He's a crab, he's this, he's that, he's the other. Everything he does is sideways. He had some absolutely brilliant passes yesterday. There's one early on that creates a chance. There's another one later on that switches from one side of the pitch to the other, cuts out about half the football team. And it's like, you're allowed to just, like, I don't get with him why there's, why there's like, the camps, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, I'm happy to go if he plays shite. Played shite there. Yeah, I think it's because he's been Equally, on... Equally, I'm, I'm happy to go he's played well there. And it seems that there's loads of people that aren't happy to do that. They've just gone... I've decided he's crap, yeah. and I'm only ever going to discuss anything that he does is that's crap. And then equally, you, you probably have got people who are too far the other way, where they're like so invested in him, mm. they want to say everything he does is brilliant. And probably the truth lies somewhere in the middle, but I just don't get why there's so many people just want to go on all the time. He's crap, he's crap, he's crap, he's not good enough. He's played for Liverpool now for seven years, seven years, 280 games, 24 goals, 40 caps for England now. Like, why are all these managers continually picking them in the sides regularly on a weekly basis if he's crap? I don't really get why, you know, there's all these people that seem to think they know more than, you know, people who run a football team. I think he's been on, he's been such a journey as a footballer that, you know, because I remember at uh, the beginning of his Liverpool career wasn't, you know, wasn't good at all. And then he, he, he's almost sold the film, which is absolutely mad. He's almost sold the film so that we can buy Clint Dempsey. Think about that. Um, no, reflection, it's not uh, great. Really bad. And then obviously the 13 14 season, he's brilliant. And from there, he sort of pushes on, he becomes the captain. And it, it's what you say. I think some people, when they're watching Jordan Henderson, if they don't like him, they're, they're looking for the negatives and they'll, they'll draw in on the negatives. And, and that's, what they'll, you know, that's what they'll look at in, in particular. And that's what they'll talk about. If they like Jordan Henderson, then you're looking for him. You're looking for him playing that ball, and you think that's brilliant ball. Look how he's opened up the pitch because that's what he was doing last night. There's twice where he gets the ball and he looks up and he just opens the whole pitch up when it was so congested. Um, and some of the tackles he was making was brilliant. And there's one where he puts it over the he puts it over the defence, and I think it's Sterling runs onto it. It's either Sterling, yeah, I think it's Sterling, and and it's and, and it creates an opportunity. And um, for him to do that in the first game at the World Cup is brilliant. And I think that. The fact that he'd lost the captaincy um, to Harry Kane and the fact that he's now put in this performance is only a positive. And I think that people should just be stopping so hard on him, especially opposition fans. I think opposition fans just want him to want him to feel That's like... That's sort of understandable. It's when it's, when it's us, if you like it. It's when it's Liverpool yeah, fans. Yeah. I don't get it. I mean, it seems to me that people still need to maybe make peace with the fact that he isn't Steven Gerrard and he's never going to be Steven Gerrard. He's Jordan Henderson and he's that player in himself. And... You know, you mentioned 13, 14. There's still no doubt in my mind that we miss him when he's suspended from the side. You know, he, he was key to that side. He was playing really well. And, and since then, his role's changed and he's playing deeper now. But, he, you know, he, he's got used to that idea. He's got some opposition for his place next season. He's going to have to fight for his place for Bino coming in and uh, Cater as well and maybe more. 
Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see that fight. Do you know me what I mean? too, because I don't believe for one second that we'll not see Jordan Henderson on the football pitch loads for Liverpool next season. Even if you know, even the fact that we're bringing in Fabinho, uh, Keita, and and possibly even like Fakir or someone someone to replace that sort of Coutinho part of midfield. I don't. I, I just don't believe for a second that Jordan Henderson will sit in the bench throughout the season. I think we'll see him p- still play a, a pivotal, pivotal role. Something I did love last night as well was him, him getting in the ref's face and, and challenging the ref on, on on decisions that he was making. Something that Harry Kane wasn't doing. Uh, I didn't yeah. see him do it once. And, he's and, enjoying uh, himself on the goals as well. Yeah, he was. Yeah, big <laughs> slide right, yeah. and everything. Yeah, I loved that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy for him, and, and hopefully we get to see Trent as well at some stage in this World Cup because that would be it'd be like a proud dad moment, wouldn't it? Sort of yeah, I really want to see him. I, I thought he could have got on last night, and, and probably done all right, but he, did, he didn't get the chance yesterday. But I mean, ITV have shown together a few clips, uh, put it out there. I retweeted it earlier where they're analysing Henderson's performance, and there's actually more on top of that as well. I mean, this idea that the sideways pass thing, which I think Keown was trotting out during the commentary. He's awful, by the way. I mean, there's a lot of shit pundits and commentators or whatever. There's some good ones as well. But, but my word, Keown. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> there's a free kick in the game and he, and he goes, oh, he couldn't get it up and down there. But yeah, I know, mate, I'm watching it. <laughs> yeah. I can see, mate, you're not adding anything to the, uh, to the picture. There's, there's been a couple of times when I've been watching the, uh, watching the, uh, the pundits start to talk and you see Gary Neville on one channel and I think, brilliant they're gonna have some good pundits here and then it cuts to like someone like Keon Keon or um on the other channel you got Phil Neville who's just awful but then you got Frank Lampard who who I think has been a breath Mm. of fresh air as well I think he's been really good at BT and he's been really good yeah Ferdinand so uh yeah I think we'll get on to some of the pundits Phil Neville does this like weird like hushed voice when he's supposedly getting excited and I've seen a brilliant tweet about it which really made me laugh it said it's like the voice you do when uh when you (laughs) When you're on the phone to Babe Station and you know your wife's in bed. <laughs> Is it? I've, I've, ne- I've never rang them, mate. But I, I, <laughs> I don't even know what Babe Station is. Oh, but, yeah. Um, you know what I mean? But uh, now he does do this really weird sort of, I don't know what he's doing. It must almost be in his head, like, and, I, and here he is. And he does this really weird. And it's like, what, what are you doing, mate? Just talk about the fuzzy. I think yeah. before, be- before we go on to the next bit, I think um, just on Jordan Henderson, I think. Like, if that wasn't Jordan Henderson and that was someone playing for some other team in the World Cup and you'd never seen that footballer before, he'd be going, "Fucking hell, he looks good." Like, looks I'd love decent. him. In, I'd love him in Liverpool's midfield, or if, you know. And and that's the thing with Henderson; he does so much that he. That there's just some fans in our fan base that'll never give him credit for because they don't like him. Yeah, there was a few little. What I was going to say, which Keown didn't seem to notice as well. There was a few little early balls that created little half chances in the box as well. Again, forward pass. Passes, quick thinking, but he's he's for some reason not given credit for it. Uh, uh, Teddy Butcher slagging him off as well, and it does seem that there's almost like, and it, it, it's not just Jordan Henderson that this happens to. You get like uh, almost cognitive biases against certain players, and then it's just sort of carried through, and, and they don't want to see anything else, which is a little bit of a shame. And, and even England fans talking about, oh, uh, you know, Dyer should be starting in front of him, like you know, catch a grip. Like your midfield isn't Gerard Lampard, schools and all of that anymore. It's you know, it's Loftus Cheek and it's and it's Henderson, it's the uh, the iron and, and so Jordan Henderson is the best centre midfielder you've got. Uh, on the subject of pundits, uh, if you didn't listen to yesterday's uh, free Anfield rap podcast, uh, give it a go because uh, we got into all the stuff you'd expect us to do. So we talked about Brewster, uh, we talked about the continued links with Shakiri. But we also talked about, we had Melissa Reddy on, uh, who's obviously a great writer, great on the shows, and we love having her on. Uh, but we asked her about what it's like sort of, to be a female football writer, pundit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this was on the back of uh, Evra with his uh, cringeworthy applause uh, while he was sat on the ITV couch. Uh, Melissa was brilliant in terms of her reaction to that, and, and, and worth a listen alone for that reason. So uh, give it a go. And uh, spread the word if you like that podcast as well, because we're always trying to get more people onto our stuff. Uh, another little plug as well for something to look out for is uh, Neil Jones of Goal has done uh, a piece with Rian Brewster, uh, which is worth a read. Uh, comes across as a nice lad, uh, not Neil, Ryan, Rian. Neil's nice too. But Neil's isn't nice he? as well, yeah. <laughs> um, a bit gutted as well because it seems that the the interviews uh, come about because of links with uh, Lyle and Scott, and it's like you know what I mean. Like me and Gibbo have been putting graft in, like bought the whole website over a series of years and 
you know, where, where's the Anfield app shout, boys? You know what I mean? Anyway, um, other news today is that uh, storage, it appears, is available for £15 million. Pounds. Uh, no surprise, really, to, to hear that, you know, they're pushing him out there and they're saying he can go. Uh, given his injury record and everything else, and also given the success of the front three, and that Brewster's now signed a deal as well as back as a backup to that front three, and that there's some another wide forward likely to come in. You just don't really see where Stunts is going to get any kind of regular football if and when he is fit. Um, up in Newcastle, Chronicle reporter Lee Ryder is is reporting that Stunts has been offered to Newcastle. Um, he says that he, he doesn't think the move will be to Newcastle, but it, it does, as I say, show that the player is getting off of the round. Uh, Sevilla, Basiktas and Fenerbahce uh, also apparently have been offered stroke or linked to Sturridge. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no surprise that he's uh, yeah. likely to go, is there? No, there isn't. And it's sad as well, because I think Sturridge will be one of those players that um, during his best times at Liverpool, I don't think he was ever appreciated enough. And then the way it's gone is just sad. But... I think he's going to be one of those players that once he's left and he's been left for a while, maybe when he retires, when people look back on Daniel Sturridge, as a Liverpool player, and they look back at that 13-14 season where he was just like unbelievable, and they watch his reel on YouTube and some of the goals he scored, they'll, they'll go, well, he was good at the time. He deserves, he was a, he was deserves credit for that because, because I think I think 13-14 now, you know, it's obviously a while back, and like people sort of forget bits and stuff like that, and, and you hear people just say, oh, it's just down to Suarez, that, but Suarez missed. The first ten games was it something and like that? He didn't that score that many at the end of that season either. Uh, in but terms of the, the Sturridge, final two months, Sturridge actually came back from injury early. Because I remember Villa away, he scores a great goal, but he also yeah. grafted. He properly grafted that game. Like there's lots of you know things thrown at him, levelled at him across his career about his attitude and all this sort of stuff. He came back from injury early, scored a great goal, and he absolutely worked his bollocks off in that game. And it was down to him that season a lot of it just as much as it is to Suarez and anyone else in that team. It's a team game, and to always pin it on Suarez, I think, isn't really fair on you know some of the other influential characters in that team, Gerard as well, Sterling as well, who's another one who people for some reason don't like to give any credit to. So, yeah. I think, um, I think just last thing on his, on his Liverpool career, if you look back on some of the, the goals he scored and some of the teams he scored against, like think of how many goals he scored against Everton, against United, against Arsenal, against uh, Chelsea. Uh, he, scores, he scores a couple of... Um, he, a couple of really important goals in that Europa League run as well. Um, the one in the semi-final against Villarreal, he celebrates like that, and 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 even scores in the final, which will be one of the the, the best forgotten goals. Um, so the fact that he scored in a European final for Liverpool, I feel sorry for him that it didn't end with a trophy because then you know he he, he probably would have been remembered a lot more fond than it, than he's likely to be. But um, and genuinely uh, a nice fella as well. Yeah. You know, genuinely a nice fella in that you know he, he did a few things with the Anfield app. He was always that that's helpful. Um, he, he got on with Andy in particular, and uh, you know, as I say, we got some really good content out of, out of it as a consequence. But yeah, um, so there will be a little bit of sadness when he moves on, but there is a, an inev inevitability about it as well. Uh, some Nabil Fakir uh, news today as well, in that uh, his agent is insisting the Leon captain could still join Liverpool this summer. Uh, the player himself has been talking about it as well, he's been asked about it. Um, he's obviously away with France at the moment in the World Cup and he's just said, you know I'm here with France, I'm happy, I'm not here to discuss my personal situation, we'll see about all that later. Which suggests almost maybe something to come and that's what his agent is suggesting as well. When he was asked specifically about it, he says he didn't sign because um, it's not over, it's not the end of the story. Uh, in James Pearce's piece though, uh, today in the Echo is he's reiterating that it was after Liverpool sought a second opinion uh, after his medical had raised some concerns over a knee injury. Uh, the, Liverpool were set to proceed with the transfer, having agreed a deal and a five year contract with the player, but whatever that second opinion was, it rang some alarm bells and Liverpool backed away from the deal. So we'll see. I mean, the lad's still playing for France, he's still playing for Lyon and maybe just something financially or something around insurance or something around the staggering of payments. We'll see whether something can. I think there's a lot that that's one of the, the things that highlights that football isn't just as easy as giving the team a money the, the money and a player coming. There's so much more to it in terms of the insurance that you talked about and the, and the way the payments are uh, are done. And you know, it obviously just got so close to the World Cup. Like I think if the World Cup wasn't going on, then we maybe would have heard a lot more about this deal. And and I can't imagine this is the end of it really. From what you know, from what we've seen people talk about and the fact that Leon 
despite what they said in their statement, Leon are apparently keen to sell, is what I've seen journalists say. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed that something happens to hopefully just get France knocked out of the World Cup early and then we'll uh, Have a chat. hopefully see something. Yeah. Um, on the Anfield app today, there is a World Cup show. Uh, which you know does what it says on the tin. Everyone having a chat about where we are with the World Cup and what they've been enjoying and everything else. There's also an AFQ football later on today as well, which is uh, any questions that are fielded towards us on Twitter or on, I think it might be the Anfield Apps subscribers group on Facebook. Uh, a little panel will answer those questions. We'll put that out there later on as a podcast. So if you want to sign up and listen to those podcasts, go to theanfieldapp.com and then it should be fairly self-explanatory from there on in because someone was asking yesterday, how do you sign up? Just go to the website, click click subscriptions, subscribe, fill out the form, sort your payments out, and then you're away. And not only can you listen to the shows that we're putting out every day, you can listen to the back catalogue as well, which includes lots of big interviews, including with Clough, with Brendan Rogers, with Rafa Benitez, with Julier, with Evans. It's loads and loads of stuff to get stuck into if you don't want to just watch World Cup stuff right we've now. Got, we've got a new website, so if you go onto yeah. the homepage of the website and scroll down, there's a highlights section, which I think has four highlights to this stage. One's the club interview, there's a podcast with Jamie Carragher and stuff on there. You'll be able to um, get on them really quickly. And just another thing as well, the LFC Tour, we're going to America. Uh, the Anfield Rap are going to America as well. We've got a live show in New York. Uh, tickets are out for that at the moment. Uh, we've got one in Detroit as well. Tickets are on ctickets.com. We haven't pushed it on social media just yet, but we'll, we'll be putting that on all our social media channels. But yeah, uh, you'll be able to get either of those two. Just be going to ctickets.com uh, and then search in TAW, T-A-W. Um, we will be doing one in Charlotte as well, but um, we're, just, we're sorting out the venue at this, at this moment in time. It should be done by the end of the week. So um, yeah, all of the tickets will be up by then. Yeah, and a big thanks to everyone who backs what we do and allows us to do those things. Because um, you know, I was thinking about this myself the other day and I was thinking, you know, we set this up in 2011. Uh, we're still do, all doing full-time jobs and that sort of stuff and doing all this in our spare time. So to go all the way through to it now being the full-time gig and being able to go and follow Liverpool around pre-season in far-flung lands and all that, it's absolutely brilliant. We all love what we do. So thanks for supporting what we do and try and get down to those gigs because uh, we have a good laugh. Live podcast, I remember, I remember it being discussed and everyone just being like, really? <laughs> but it works, doesn't it? It works. We are, honestly, everyone who's come down, I don't think anyone's ever said, well, I didn't like that. They're mad, they're mad you know. Yeah. The, the first time I did one, I'd, n- I'd never actually been to one to, to watch it just in... Um, it was a lot. It was a lot more lively. It certainly wasn't a, like a live podcast or a serious footy chat the whole night. It was no, involved Gibbo doing like uh, Suarez dives on stage and just and generally the crowd going off to to different songs and stuff. So it's um, it's really really good fun. I'm I'm really excited and um, we'll be getting loads of content as well out in the US. Like hopefully in in the same vein as we've done in in Rome and Kiev as well some videos, hopefully talking reds. Well, I'd imagine talking reds every yeah, day from, from the US, which will be exciting for sort of nine or 10 days. So yeah, should be good. It's right, that's been talking reds. We'll see you tomorrow.